the website that bibletools.org i'm going to put it down below and it's connecting the book of revelation 3 7 which is the letter from jesus to the church of philadelphia and then we have it being connected to isaiah chapter 22 verse 20 all the way down to the end of the chapter that's interesting um, I think they do a very good job in the article of explaining something very complicated. And then I found this here, Second Corinthians 4, 6. It says, For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, make his light shine in your hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Okay. And the next one is, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on each side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our bodies the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in, in our bodies for we who are alive are always being given over to death for Christ, for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be also revealed in our mortal bodies. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken, since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised up Jesus Christ from the dead will also raise us with Christ and present us with you to him. All of this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving and overflow of the glory of God. Therefore, we do not, take, we do not lose heart. Though outward, outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day for our light and, uh, and momentary tr troubles are achieving for us the eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. I think that's Apostle Paul who wrote that. Paul, yeah, that's right. Wow. Um, so the Holy Spirit was working real strong in Paul. So I wanted to talk today about the glory of God and about how this world is so comfortable glorifying ourselves and other people. But for some reason, we don't want to glorify God. Like there's something very like wrong. Oh, you're wrong for thinking God deserves to be glorified for eternity and that there should be angels with their their faces being covered saying holy 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 in front of his throne like you know who who is he to think that he deserves that this is what the world is like and the world is using these same people that it glorifies and thinks is worthy of idolizing to allow these people to sell satanic concepts and ideas like that they should do everything in their power to destroy themselves and everything around them. Um, I know right now the hotbed conversation is uh, Demi Lovato and the horrible things that happened to her life because of the lifestyle that she is promoting. And of course, this is not a unique idea. Like we know, this is this is what what she's selling is the very thing that destroyed her. But she's idolized, she's loved, she's worshipped. There's, I think, a church out in San Francisco that idolizes Beyonce. Like, nobody bats an eye at that. Like, people will gather together and sing by Beyonce songs and cry and, you know, shake around. And, and that's okay. But to worship the God who has all the power, all the strength, who gave you the voice that everybody's worshipping to give you a voice to worship something else, in, including not him. Like, if, if he was a lesser god, I think he would say, well, if you're not worshiping me, your voice leaves. But he didn't do that because he wants us to have a choice. He doesn't want robots. 
He wants us to see everything as it is and still choose not to follow him or to follow him. So I don't really know how to articulate clearly what kind of God and a miraculous, wonderful God he is, unless you're on that, I guess you could say, a piece on the chessboard and you've seen all the all the moves around you. Like, like I've made a lot of bad moves and still I'm winning and it's not because of me, it's because of God. It's because what he's doing, it's for his glory. And so I want to talk today about Padre Pio. And the only reason why I'm talking about him is because I'm pretty sure he's the one that, if I got my saints messed up, my apologies, but I'm pretty sure he's the one that, um, he called himself a weakling or a, a, a weak lamb or something. He had this really sad name for himself. <laughs> and he would say this to God in his prayers. And it was only, only a private thing he would say. And one day, he was going up the stairs, and an angel approached him. And it, he knew it was an angel, and it's only because the angel gave him the, the kind of signal, which is he called him a private name. He said, uh, you know, kind of put his arm around Padre Pio. I'm pretty sure this is the guy. And he put his arm around him, and then he said, you know, kind of said a joke to him. But he called him by a private name only he and God would know. And so he kind of... I don't know how, I don't know. I've, I've had this in a spiritual way, but never an angel. And uh, so I understood when I read it, what it was that was happening. And I too have a nickname for myself, but I'm, it's not private. I call myself a spiritual Charlie Chaplin. And it's just an in joke between God and myself. I trip all over myself, um, but still the show goes on. Uh, there's not even much of a sound, there's not much of a music, there's not much of a voice all the time. You know, it's not my voice, I would hope. And the only reason why things tend to be working out is because it has nothing to do with me. Because I have a speech impediment, I've had dyslexia, I've had learning disabilities, I it has very little to do with me. So when you have a God that has this plan, this big master plan, and has decided to use you to be a part of it, to bring it to fruition. You can't help, but especially this God who knows everything about you, and, and you can't hide anything from this God. You can't help but know that this God is worthy of worship, and nobody and nothing else is, and including you. Because I think we have to have an ego to protect ourselves. We have to have something like a kind of like a superficial wall around us to say that we're deserving of something in order to justify getting up in the morning and having energy but I, I don't honestly don't have that I don't and I do go back and forth it's kind of a, I'm on a balance beam when it comes to that I get up every day because I have things that God put in my life that are like carrots on a stick and it's never been money it's never been the things that motivate other people, but when that God saw everything I was and everything I wasn't and said, you know what you need, you need, you need a kid, you know, it, it, even when you're in sin, you know, not married and God blesses you with a child, you're having sex outside of marriage, it happens all the time. And God says, you can, this is yours. It's a beautiful, beautiful gift, and it's priceless. That's an amazing God. You know, when he's using the, all the times that you've cursed him, he uses those times to bless you in the future, to, to show you that he was always there for you and with you, even when you didn't like him, even when you refused to understand him, even when you didn't even have it, the ability to understand who he was. He was still faithful. That's how you know this is a wonderful God. To use every single trip that you make to accidentally stumble into other pieces on the chessboard and then see them tumble and fall and realize, oh, that was kind of part of the plan, <laughs> but it wasn't your plan. At some point you have to go, this isn't my plan. This isn't me. This, is, this, this has very little to do with me. But I'm, I feel very happy to be counted I, I don't even know if the word is worthy, but silly enough 
to be given something so precious. Like every parent who's given a kid, they go, wow, like I'm leaving the hospital with a child and I, this kid doesn't even come with an instruction manual. That's how it feels. It's like, wow, like God is really special, man. He is really something else. I can't even really, I might write a story trying to explain this. That's the only way I know how to do it. Um, I really was trying to really be articulate with this, and I'm a really, I, I know this was something I was supposed to do a video on, but the Bible seems to just get it right, you know, like the fact that the book of Revelation and Isaiah 20 go together like that, the way that this happens all the time is cross-references, and it just happens seamlessly, and now some people now are only coming to this revelation, even after theologians for many, many years has been studying the Bible, have not discovered or found out half of what we found out in the last 10 years, because you can put in a word in, in Google, and then you can find it everywhere else in the Bible, and you start to realize it's almost like God made the Bible for such a time as this, so that you can see all the different times when Moses was, was at the well, when all these different main characters who are real historical figures were sitting at the well trying to charm or find a wife, and you can see that Jesus was extending what he was offering from the Jews first to the Samaritan woman, who the Jews didn't like. I mean, they didn't even cross into their land. And when they did grow into Samaria, they would actually take the shoes off their feet and like beat off the dirt from their feet just to make sure that that cursed land wasn't on their sandals. That's how much they didn't like them. And God, Jesus, sat at that well and extended what he was doing to them which was saving the world in a way that we didn't even understand at that time. So when you see all the times that those clay jars appear, happens to be by a well, and this is one of the places I actually found in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, where I was doing this, the jar study, and the fact that we are clay jars, and everything that's happening in us is, this surpassing power is all having to do with God. I mean... It's just incredible. I mean, even, even when you watch some of these videos, like I said, from 2019, where the theologians were like, I don't know, it kind of sounds like the, four, the 144,000 might be Jews. That's weird. I mean, who, who would have thought of that? It makes perfect sense, because Apostle Paul said so in, in, in Romans 9, 10, and 11. He made it clear that there would be a comeback or, around and an increase in the Jews coming back. So it all makes sense, but for some reason, up until like the last maybe 20, 10 years, I, I don't know, maybe maybe some other like real deal. I, I've only been really paying attention for the last 10 years. My dog is snoring. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but I guess this is boring to some degree to some people, but I'm very, very thrilled by it. I'm really, really excited to have God shining such light and discovering, you know, these different puzzle pieces in the Bible. I'm very thrilled by it. And I really think it honors and glorifies God in a very real way. And I was listening to this Russian book. Um, I'll probably put a reference to it visually because I can't say the words. I can't even say the name of the author. That's how messed up my tongue is. Um, there was this character at the beginning of the story. He was like a saintly character, but he allowed people to bow to him. And I'm thinking, you might be disqualified if you think people should bow to you. You might have disqualified yourself as a saint. And then listening to priests talk about how they would dismember saints and keep pieces of the saints. Could you imagine Peter like having a conversation with Paul or anybody else about this saint died, and we know he had the Holy Spirit, but let's keep pieces of him and put it in a holy place. There's just something about how humans take whatever God has to offer, the Holy Spirit being given to us, not having to do with it. It's like keeping pieces of a clay jar. What does it matter, the piece of what God is using? It's not God. People are not God. Like, I don't... I think that's what got me on the tangent was this book. See, that's what happens. I can't read fictional books. I can't. Not even listen to it. It's just an audio book. I can't even listen to it. 
But yeah, I think if you were allowing people to bow to you, you might have disqualified yourself <laughs> as a saint. Uh, let's be real. So anyway, um, this is Linda of Christ's King Forever. May God be with you.